skin. It's full of blood, covered in hair, and gets all bumpy when a cute lady kisses it. But is skin something we need? Absolutely not. Without flesh, gone would be the days of cowering to the steel edge of a blade for the fear of being poked so hard you die. Say goodbye to generic emo lyrics like, So cut my wrist and black my eyes. Too much blood, trickle, trick, trick, and then I die. My skin and veins are a blood well. So kill me, kill me, kill me well. And without blood, no one will see the rosy flush of embarrassment on mine own face when I call teacher mommy. They'll just see confidence in my skinless visage calling teacher mommy. Come here, mommy. But what if I told you the dream of a skinless life could be achieved by cleaning off that useless flesh in a terrifying acid shower implemented by an evil concarnate dog known for a specific facial feature? Problematic, you say? Well, we thought the same thing, but obviously the writers of Los Luchadores didn't. But at least we can all agree that teachers is mommies. My name is James. I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly Mostly Lovin' Lucha. Ooh, yeah. Like I said, my name's Macho James. I make you Randy Baby Mullum Savage. Who do I have here in this ring? Hey, it's me. What's your name, champion? Nicole. I thought your name was going to be a Nicole <laughs> Flair. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, Ooh, yeah, I'm a pro wrestler. I die before I get to 60 years old. Who else do we have here? Nicole, I'm skipping that bit. Ooh, check out a blooper where I we fudge it up real bad. <laughs> arf, arf. Ooh, yeah, arf, arf. That's the macho man being a dog having sex. YOLO, baby, wow. you only live once when you're watching a dog have sex. It's the funniest thing you can possibly see in the entire... Jose, Jose <laughs> looks very <laughs> defensive right now. He's holding his book like, a, like an emo girl would in a music video who's about to just do a poem recital and it's like you cut my heart into pieces and jesus is the greatest yeah emo catholicism baby catholicism's emo but we got to get to our guests right away catholicism is emo yeah guys i i am an emo girl yeah baby I'm an emo girl, non-conforming as can be. You'd be emo girl if you look just like me. Wear makeup on my face and patter my toes. I must be emo. I'm going home. You know that song. song. What is the song? Wait, you've never... It's the emo kid song. I'm an emo kid, non-conforming as can be. It was by like Matt and Tom or something weird like that. It was a huge MySpace. Remember, Rudy wasn't alive during MySpace, baby. I had MySpace, though. I mean, I was alive during MySpace. I just didn't get anything until Facebook was a thing. He was a Bebo kid. I had MySpace (laughs) in like sixth grade. Oh, nice. Were you just jacking off to pictures on MySpace? Yeah, baby. High High five. five. I made the noise for you. Thank you. Oh, like this noise. That's masturbating. But we have today, Rudy, you know him as Nilo, say hello. Hello, it's me. And then we have Jose, <laughs> also known as Not Suzette. Hey. <laughs> He's hey. Giram. Guys, uh, Nicole and I, it doesn't matter. If you bump the mic once, it's fine. You don't need to like look like you lit something on fire then stubbed your toe. I feel like I toe. lit something on fire. That's, that's just how I feel. Because you bring in the heat. Fuerte. That means fire, guys. No, no. No, it's fuego. And then I also <laughs> learned, Jose told me this, fuego I is a girl fire. Did not. <laughs> did not. No. Uh, I know. Fuega is the... You have Fuego, which is the most powerful fire spell in Final Fantasy. Then Fuega is the second one. No, and it's Fue. Fundaga. Yes, I know this. <laughs> yes, and this shit. Not no and. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, though, because like I never played... Not even Kingdom Heart? No. Well, man, you got to check out Mickey. He's ripped, but... <laughs> Mickey's a cuck in that, isn't he? he, he he's a, a C word? That's what I've been told by Corey and Rudy. Yeah, because uh, freaking 
Sora's just finger banging Mickey under the bleachers. You mean Minnie? Mickey, you know Mickey. <laughs> I think you mean Donald. Oh man, everyone's getting finger banged in Kingdom Hearts. At least the fanfic I write. Oh, uh, let's write a fanfic, dude, guys. Fuck it, let's do right it right now. Yeah, right, oh. right the fuck now. Right the fuck meow. Sora walks in on Rico. He's fucking a pow pow fruit. <laughs> He's like, oh, I love the five edges. And it's making me edge closer, closer, and I'm jumping over. And then he falls from the sky, but up into a river, like in the intro tells us. And then World of Light, the theme from World of Light starts playing. I don't know what that is. From Smash Brothers. Okay. (laughs) Then Mr. Hand comes out and gives them all handies. (laughs) Oh my God. What is any of this? You know what doesn't say Christmas time better than Christmas? What? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Finish a thought. Uh, but guys, we have been having a huge debate in our household starting last night. You guys let us know. Out of Nicole, Frank, and I, who would be the Odie, who would be the John, and who would be the Garfield? Comment oh. below. Mm. Yes, and please leave it in a review, a five-star review. Let us know. Fans, let us know. Um, that's that's a tough one. I feel like Nicole would be the John. I don't think James so. would be the Odie. Because God, no, damn I think, it. I think I think <laughs> Frank would be John. Nicole would be no. I think James would be Garfield, and I think Nicole would be I, Odie. I was hoping you you were on the right track. I believe Frank is John. I am Odie, and Nicole is Garfield. You know what? Because especially if you see how Frank and I react to each other, like Frank is very compassionate towards me because Nicole's just like thrashing around at night. Oh. And it's like, don't even get close to me, guys. I need my 12 hours. Okay. Nicole, what do you think? James. Okay. Here's the back, the origin story. James asked me this question for no fucking reason because it's James <laughs> and like expecting That's a very OD thing to do for me to like say the same answer that he thinks and uh, he's so disappointed that i didn't say that what do you think i already forgot (laughs) because i think nicole was trying to make herself out as an odie and i think that is completely wrong no i see it though I don't know. A- after Nicole just explained the story, I feel like she'd be the Garfield. Oh, you a Garfield. Okay, man. Now. And you know what? Yeah, James would, by transitive properties, have to be the Odie because isn't Odie usually up in Garfield's business? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> there and we then go. You push, Garfield is constantly physically pushing Odie away. So then Frank Like, I think I said John. you or John, I'm Garfield, and Frank is Odie? Frank is totally not an Odie. <laughs> Frank's a John. Yeah. Frank uh, you is know, I see it. John, I see yeah. it. The because dynamic. Because Frank is constantly at night screaming to himself, and John technically is always talking to himself. Why is Frank screaming to himself? He, I don't know what he's doing. I wish we could translate. Oh. I tried using that app that you put it up to someone's mouth, and it will translate what they're speaking into English. English, it does not work on cats. <laughs> oh, shame. I'm surprised about that. You know, you think technology would be better by now. It'll be part of the DLC. That's what it is, yeah. Okay, fingers crossed. Now, I do have something that Nicole did not answer. Out of the three ninjas, Rocky, Colt, Tom, Tom, Tum, uh, Tum, as I recently found out, who would we be? Rocky, of course, is his name, real name Samuel, is because of his strength and level-headed mentality. Colt, because of his speed and temper like a young, wild stallion. And Tum Tum, due to his energy coming from gluttony. Who's the oldest? I'm the old. I mean, in who? cat years, Frank's the no, oldest. Like, who was the oldest in the movie? Oh, it goes Rocky, Colt, Tum Tum. Okay, I think... He'll eat anything besides dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> I think Frank is Tum Tum. I think Rocky would be Nicole and you would be Colt. Okay, I agree with you on Colt. Frank has a very limited diet. He only eats ducks. So that's why I don't <laughs> think he is Tum Tum. Nicole would be Tum Tum because I also can't eat a lot of foods. Frank's Rocky. He's I, strong and he has a level headed mind. Actually, none of us are Rocky. <laughs> no. We're too manic to be Rocky. I guess we're half Tum Tum, a quarter Colt, except Nicole doesn't like to run and Frank can't run. I've never seen this movie, so I have absolutely You've no never idea. S- yeah, I don't. I've heard of it. 
and I, I okay, I 100%, I think I saw, like, the ending of this movie on, like, Channel 9 when I was a kid. Did these kids, like, all of a sudden get magical ninja garments? Uh, no, flat? Okay, no. Wait, wait, they, no they, not magical. They just get mag- ninja garb. Okay. It's been a while since I've seen these movies, but they were really good. It's going to be a weird question, but from oldest to youngest, is their color scheme green Blue and red. Green, blue, and orange. Orange, okay. But hey, you might be a little colorblind, or maybe you were watching it on a bad TV. Could be, uh, yes. I get those two colors mixed up all the time. Uh, There's as well a difference? As, yeah. Oh, shit. Did you know that you can see a dress and it could be blue, but other times it could be gold? Did you know fuck off? Oh, Did you yes. know that it's just the lighting that it was in? Did you know that fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that brown is a shade of orange? Did, did you know... That he's right. Yeah. He's... Did you know that, like, if you put a red light on something, it makes it look red? Nice. Did you know you're my hero? Academia. Oh. Did you ever know that you're my hero? I accompanied her like a weird ale band would. That's Sweet great. Home Alabama. I don't know what's happening. Oh, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Guys, <laughs> speaking of what's happening, Rudy's been on here before, but Jose hasn't. What did you think of Lost Luchadors? Have you ever seen it before? Never seen it. Never going to see it again. I <laughs> fucking hate it. Why? Because oh. it's the fucking worst. It's a smoke show of a show, though. No. Everyone's hot as hell. No. Oh, man, I'd even let Mr. Mayor Potts hit me. Oh. Fuck the mayor, turbine? first of all. Uh, fuck turbine. Turbine. Oh, turbine, even? Those muscles are ripped. You just have to put a bag over his face. <laughs> I, Especially cover that fucking shit hairdo. I was about got. to say it can't be a paper bag because that'll puncture right through. It has to be a bag for life, like a tote bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a plastic bag, and then I tie think that the show no. is super fun to watch when you're with friends, but oh, on yeah. your own, I don't think I could handle it. I've enjoyed watching on my own because I've had to watch every episode on my own. Congratulations, Trey. Hey. Summary. Yeah, I fucking hate uh, the the. The show just makes me feel like, ugh. But as someone of Mexican descent... I am not Mexican. (laughs) You're not? I am not Mexican. (laughs) Then how come he's always saying it? Because he's a piece of shit. I never said he was Mexican. I just say he's he's Hispanic. (laughs) I'm... My father's Cuban, and my mom is Guatemalan. Okay. Might be... We're removing this from the no, episode. You better keep that shit in. Okay, I feel bad. I apologize. No, my ex was Mexican, so I, I know a little bit about the culture. So he's Mexican by ex relation. Can yeah. you call her and say if this is a proper representation, dude? If I call her, she's just gonna be like, "What the fuck are you calling me for right now?" Say like, "I'm just so sad, and I want you back." And then you freaking say, "Psych," and Psych? hang up. And no. then she's like. Oh, I want him more now. He's so badass. Hey, you should start doing turbine. Yeah, you should start doing horrorcore rap music, and then (laughs) girls will think you're dangerous. Oh my god! For some dumb fucking reason, (laughs) or just get a hot rod motorcycle and uh, turbine's mask, and you'll be like, he'll be the hot version of turbine. No, he'll be the better version of turbine. He's all he's already wearing red. Anyway, uh, I've I've gr- <laughs> I have a lot of friends that are Mexican. A lot of the people I hung out with growing up were Mexican, and I used to watch uh, Mucha Lucha a lot. Yes, because it was a fucking fantastic show, and I actually thought we were gonna watch. Not Why? today. Why does everyone not today? Think but that? every time you you mention <laughs> mostly love and lucha, I've always thought it was Mucha Lucha that. That you guys were watching. No, that's a good show. Why I would know. we watch it here? Besides Super <laughs> Sentai. Super Sentai is fantastic. It's just bonkers. But exactly. But I was just, I don't know. I I just was under the wrong impression of what we were going to be, what would be watched on the show. Hey, but if this is wrong, I don't want to be right. Oh, Turbine, sweep me up on your feet and let me go underneath the threshold and bring me Oh, unholy bliss. I'm surprised wow, you're not gyrating why? like you usually are. No, I'm kidding. I don't want <laughs> Turbine. God, if you look like Turbine, I'm sorry, Nicole. <laughs> I would jump off of a bridge. If you got a wig that was like Turbine and you cosplayed as him, I would legitimately be very excited about it. I'd be like, yeah, Nicole, this is fucking badass. I would jump off a bridge. Hey, uh, with bungee jumps... That's no. Turbine. He's extreme. I think Turbine's uh, wall riding motorcycle will save you just in time. Yeah. It can also ride on bungee cables. 
Can it? Yeah, no. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yes, what it can do. It can write on walls. Why can't it write on bungee cables? Rudy, what'd you think of this episode over the last one? Oh, over the last one? I don't know. I really like this episode just because they introduced the Chihuahua. I know he was in previous episodes. I just never saw him. Yeah. The Chihuahua. Love it. I. It's just weird. It's oh, great. Yeah. The whole concept of the bonifying everybody was just ridiculous. Everything was ridiculous. This is a bonafide plot. Uh, <laughs> I want to say something before we get into the... Yeah. I do not like most of the accents on the show. Oh, That's yeah. the best part. Uh, there's one... Really? They're so bad, it's good. No. Yes. Uh, there's one person of a Hispanic descent in the show, and that is it. I, I don't is even think he is. I don't even think Lobo really is. He might be... Well... His... I think he is. There is very, very okay, he little might be Hispanic, about him. But he's probably not Latino. There's a difference. Let's check. I already tried. I, there's nothing on him. Yeah, the, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Maybe that's also not his real name. They just made it that yeah, way. Max, so it's, it's like Max Maximo Maroni. Yeah. Maybe he's just not real. Maybe and... he's Italian. He does a really good Spanish accent. From that's Spain. just his actor name. That's Maybe true. it's not Butter. Maybe, Maybe he is Maybelline. a. He could be a real he, wrestler. He could be from Spain. That's the thing. Mm. Yeah. Either Spain or Argentina. And... España. I know things. Uh, <laughs> no, it's lasagna. Oh my gosh. Spamemi. Spamemi. <laughs> <Man -na -na. James. laughs> what's up? Episode summary? I have a bit for you. Yeah, what's up? Okay. Okay. Hope it's a bit of love. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> Nick Flair. No, I'm Rick Lizzo. Flair. Oh. It's a joke. It's actually like, whoop, but it's funny because it's like similar. You laughed. You laugh. I love Insert Lizzo. Insert a laugh track, but it's like <laughs> the one where it's like children <laughs> laughing. What? Or no, where they're like, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah, do that one. <laughs> I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready for this Epsom? Yeah. Okay, See. remember, please jump in. If you have notes that commemorate this, whatever the word is, let, let it roll. Today, we watched episode 13 of Lost Luchadores entitled Puppy Love, or maybe it's not because we know how mislabeled these episode titles have been. We begin our show in the ring with Lobo and some weird masked heel named Motley or Gnarly, not sure which is which, getting some heat over from the crowd. This heel then puts a musty handkerchief in Lobo's face while he's pinned. Lobo gets power from schnozzle sniffing like Frank Booth as he jumps up screaming, let's wrestle, I'll pin anything that moves, and then calls out this goon for cheating. That sounds so real kinky, though. The Frank Booth line is, uh, let's fuck, I'll fuck anything that moves. So it is kinky. It is, yeah. guys. Do you think a wrestler could actually use chloroform in the ring? No. I, I mean, mean, like, do you oh, think... I just thought it was a sweaty handkerchief. It oh. is. Oh. It's, suppo it's supposed to be like, so... He said knockout gas. It or knockout juice. Knockout juice. Yes. It's a wet fart instead of like a gassy fart. Uh. Mick Foley used to use Mr. Socko or yeah. Mr. Sock. I forgot what it, what they called him. And I think it was like an actual dirty sock. And then Santino Morella had like basically the same bit, but it was like a, it was just a longer sock and he just put it in your mouth and you basically fall asleep. It was horrible. You should just finger the mouth and then you'll puke everywhere. No, oh, oh. All of this and then, sounds so disgusting. And then they're donezo for the day. You know what is donezo? What? This bit. Go okay, on. guys. Wait, bye, real, bye. Wait, real quick. I'm sorry. This whole tube sock thing or sock thing in general just reminded me of this guy in high school who asked one of our sex ed teachers if we could use a tube sock for uh, protection. That's all. Thank you. Oh, no. And you can, How would guys? that work, though? Because it's like... Wouldn't lube it, just it up real good. It but it wouldn't. would just absorb the lube. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't even work. Like... Let's try it, guys. Rudy, I'm what down. are you doing later? Okay. <laughs> but like with a fake vagina or fake butthole or fake mouth. Rudy, what are you doing later? Probably doing something with a tube sock, I you guess. You have to All have right. like a thin dick. Or a fat <laughs> pussy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you just need a thin tube sock. Yeah, it, like a dress sock. Yeah, there you go. It's not a tube yeah, sock, yeah, though. Sure. But those are only like 1% effective in preventing <laughs> pregnancy. But a thicker tube sock, you know, no, like one of those woolly no, ones, no, no. that's about it's, 13. It's 100% effective because the sock will just absorb. Yeah, you don't know juice. how sperm works. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, think about it. Think about the science, though. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> my, my notebook is out. All right. I'm taking notes. All right, all right, all right. All right. So, like, 
it'll just act like a sponge and it'll just absorb. And then the, the, the little guys won't have anywhere to go. He's that's, not. That's probably why I have five kids. <laughs> that sounds science, guys. But sorry, Lobo. If someone makes you smell their body odor while they're on top of you, that doesn't make them a cheater. That makes you Randy, baby. But after Lobo obviously beats these two goofball heels, they leave the stadium from the back where the whelp, who is about to die from exposure, is waiting for them to make a deal. Guys, this is an exotic dog in the lands of the frigid north. He's shaking like me when I decide a cold glass of chalky milk, Yoda baby style, Ugh. is going to be my one and only breakfast item on a cold Chicago day. But even my slender like man body with iced choco in my veins, in mine veins, won't be shivering anywhere near this blatant display of animal cruelty. If anyone knows Dan Clark, creator and production consultant for this show, please turn him into your neighborhood friendly SPCA. Flash forward. What are you guys? To, ooh, ooh, you guys vaping, guys? Yeah, we're vaping. That's that vape hit, guys. We're vaping sweet tarts that I just found in my pocket. <laughs> Nice. I have some sweet tarts if you guys want to bring them home. I don't want them. Oh, do you not want a sweet tart then? No, thank you. It's too tart and too sweet for mine own blood. Ah, Get rid of your skin, guys. Flash forward to the mayor's office where Lobo and Turbine see old Potts and assistant burst in screaming, I've lost my marbles, like I've screamed after committing to watch Lost Luchadores for this podcast, okay. Jose. Okay, first of all, that scene where he's like, I lost my marbles, I lost my marbles. Where's fucking accent? Did, and he, then I, I, did he have I, an accent? Yes. He has a Canadian accent. It did uh, not sound like he was trying to do a he's Canadian like, oh, accent. Oh, yes. Uh, he's, it's a very coy accent. It sounded like, like timid. He, it sounded like a Canadian was trying to do a Mexican-American oh, accent. Oh, no, no, no. You need to watch more episodes. He is never trying to do that. It sounded like it, though. That's why I was real fucking annoyed by the mayor. But also, fuck the mayor. It's just fucking annoying. He One is. thing that really bothered me in that scene was like, oh, Lobo, Turbine, I need you to accompany me to such and such event. And then he like holds up a little poster in the corner that displays like a picture of like the thing he's doing. But uh, it, it was held upside down. <laughs> I don't know why that bothered me so much. I get it that it's like the character is ridiculous, but he's incompetent at his job so much. So he's like, I'm about to play with my lucky marbles, but I need a superhero here because it says three plus on marbles. And my mentality is not that of a three plus year old. Wait, is that what he said? No. Okay. <laughs> so going back to the upside down <laughs> poster. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear something funny? Yeah, uh, in no. my senior year of high school, I was the head. I was the lead photographer for our, uh, our yearbook. Please tell me you took a picture upside down. So our picture, like it was like, oh, meet the people behind the yearbook, and it, like it showed all the the people in charge of certain sections that were in the yearbook. For me, we had like a you know like when you're when the mug shots and they're holding that thing. Yeah. Yeah. We did that as like the bit. But, like, it said lead photographer. Oh, yes. So, That's not even the funny part. You rib me. So, it was, mine said lead photographer, my full name. And then we went to go take the picture. And what is your full name? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and then, so, I go to take the picture. And they take one normal. And I was like, oh, this is kind of boring. So, I turn it upside down, right? Turn the, the, the sign upside down and take the picture. And I put it in the yearbook. And nobody has found it until <laughs> recently. Somebody sent me a picture and like, bro, are you stupid? And I was like, no, this was, it was for a bit. It was for a bit. I promise. Beautiful. Uh, I, I thought I was funny. It was funny. I like it. You're a funny man. I wish. Remember when I, when I said Vaminos and you said something like Vainamo? That was not me. I know. Rudy's <laughs> hilarious, guys. No. Vaminous. Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. Vaminos McChachos. Escuchame, partner. <laughs> no. I'm trying to get through. It doesn't even mean excuse me. <laughs> it doesn't. That's, yeah. Round I've these here parts. I had that argument with him. Mind your P's and Q's and say escuchame it when you need through. Me. <laughs> uh, no. uh, Making my way down to El Peso. Uh, can I get back to this? <laughs> Bam anals. Yes, but please do it in a bad Hispanic accent. No. no. Damn it. Jinx. <laughs> Now he can't tell us no. I'm yes. kidding. I, I won't do that. <laughs> Except I will read it like this here, partner. That's my cowboy accent. Oh, no. Uh, 
But he's talking about his lucky marble collection, which he finds after pushing his fragile assistant to the ground. I had a marble collection once, and I put it in vials of my own pee-pee as a childhood non-school sanctioned science experiment. I've mentioned on previous episodes, but forgot up until now that I put marbles in there for some reason. <laughs> this is real? Yeah, this is real. <laughs> Why? Okay. And then I... the pee-pee turned co- different colors, and then my mom found it. <laughs> And she's like, it smells like disgusting piss. Oh, no. (laughs) It is piss, Mom. (laughs) It's pee-pee, Mommy. It's my piss. It's for science. Wait, wait, Mom, Mom. It's Mom, just think think of the science. Think of the science, okay? We now know my (laughs) pee-pee turns color. My little boy pee-pee turns color. (laughs) And the mar... My headphones popped off, Mommy. I'm so sorry. Why wouldn't you just put water in it? They fell off in the pee-pee water. There was, the marbles weren't... I don't... Um, the marbles were just there to be cool, I think. Like, you know when you put, wait. like, marbled stuff in a fish tank? It's like that, but for pee-pee. So, wait, did you just have jars of pee and you are like, I'm gonna put marbles in they, it? No, they were these little, like, vials that we had that were from, like, a kid's science thing that you could screw the top on. And then we had this... Uh, it had a bunch of tiny little shelves in it so, for art supplies or something that my brother had. Okay. And we just hid them in there and they turned like purple. So did you like scoop it out of the toilet or did you pee into it? Of course I peed right into <laughs> it. I'm not a, that would have contaminated the specimen. Because my yeah. dumbass probably would have just like, at, how old were you? Maybe six. <laughs> my dumbass probably would have just scooped it out of the toilet. Just How hmm? could you scoop something out of the toilet? If your head's on the ground because it's so <laughs> big, you. you can't like <laughs> see where you're going. Wait, did you like that picture I sent you, by the way? Yes, I did. <laughs> what picture? It's uh, I posted it on my Instagram. It was like um, it was after James, had, like me. I was on that um, mostly speaking Sentai episode, mm-hmm. and James was like, "Oh, you had a you, you, your head was fla- uh, bobbing around all the time because you couldn't support." Your neck couldn't support your head. He said he had a big head. <gasps> you oh, said I had okay. a big head. No, you said as a child you had a big head. No. I don't. I, 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 don't I don't know remember. what you look like as a <laughs> as a child. Anyway, I found my on my birthday, my grandma showed me a picture of us when I was uh, when I was like two, three years old, and I sent it to James. I was like, "You're right. I did have a big ass head." <laughs> we uh, were looking at Big O and the Iron Giant, things like that, and I was like, "Man, those heads are huge!" And you're like, "You want to see a big head? Look at me as a child." <laughs> God. Oh man. We were <sighs> watching Ron Jeremy fuck style, and you were like, you think that's a big head? You should, should have see. seen me as a baby. <laughs> Ew. Oh, God. no. Okay, let's get <laughs> into this episode summary more. Uh, I had a marble collection once. It's full of pee-pee. He lets the gang know in his typical frantic yet shy yet nervous fashion that the water treatment plant is having a big ceremony to unveil the purest water they've ever seen. It's just them cracking open a crisp, clean Dasani and pouring it into the water supply, though. Dasani. Ingredients H2O and nothing else. Stay hydrated with no filter so you can fill her or him with your sticky hydration. Drink Dasani as clear as their water is, not a sponsor. (laughs) But Lobo and Turbine, which I'm going to shorten as Lobine, has for efficiency and character's type's sake... Head to find the missing wrestlers from last night. The only thing that turns up are their cherry hogs with electric ignition and the illusion that the men riding it have a sweet fuck style. Plus, this slime stuff that Turbine steps in, which I guess is a clue? Really? It was probably just dropped there by a child YouTuber who had to shut down his or her channel and give up on his or her dream after recently being demonetized under COPPA rules. No, it was there. Sorry, it was there. It was uh, the leftovers of Backdoor Sluts 9. God, you, Backdoor real. Sluts 9? Yeah, don't ever watch that. Oh, <sighs> man. It's horrible. I mean, I've never seen it. It's just a bit from South uh, Park. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You asked, <laughs> James. You wanted this. I guess I should be clear. Uh, interrupt with episode-related things, or I guess, like, interesting things. <laughs> The class photo thing, but you just regurgitated... You're Corey now, man. You regurgitated <laughs> someone else's bit. 
Figus. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them credit. Corey doesn't do that. I'm Dream Daddy. We named the dad Figus. <laughs> Did you really? But it's spelled yeah. fig ass. Uh, okay. Uh, this YouTuber just wanted to make cool slime on the internet with his corgi in the background for the extra pupper driven clicks. Lobine then gets the call that skull dudes are wreaking havoc at tornadas. That's a female tornado. Hey, you <laughs> no, but no. They should know Maria has it covered because she is always there. Realistically, she may either one have no family to go home to, two have a serious smoothie air quotes drinking real quotes problem or three if you see her hand under the table don't bother her she kind of looks like stephanie from lazy town oh yeah no i get it do you see it though rudy I guess you're the she got to bake the cakes and scream with Lil john when i first saw her i thought she had a very britney spears look i don't I, remember I don't what know. exactly she I just looks like episode. if the girl f- from Lazy Town, Stephanie wore a mask and had pigtails. Oh, I'm sorry. Real quick, there was a small thing that I wanted to mention. There was like a transition in between a uh, Lobo or sorry Turbo uh, stepping on the slime uh, before they go to Tornados, where they go over to the water treatment facility and there's like a skeleton with a hard hat on pouring yeah. slime into <laughs> the water treatment shit. And I'm just like, how is nobody seeing this skeleton? Is it purely because he has a hard hat on? It bothered the piss out of me, and I just needed to bring it up. He tied the person up. Yeah, but, like, that's the only person working, I guess. Yeah, but, like, does nobody else walking around see that there's a skeleton with a hard hat? Or are they just like, ah, hard hat, have carry you, on. Have you never seen Hitman, the game? You literally I, just take their clothes, walk around. You're the only bald man in the entire game. There's a difference. You're a bald man with skin, not a bald skeleton. But you stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> not when you wear a hat. But a skeleton wearing a hat. Oh my god! It's the also, same there's, thing. There's tons of bald people. What are you talking about? In the game? Yeah, barely. It, there's enough that you could just be a normal bald man and just pass as a person. You don't know what you're talking about. I think he does. He's played Hitman before. Have you, Jose? Yes. Yeah, I know you're the one who brought it up. <laughs> Maybe you've just seen the movie. It was so culturally significant. The movie hit, man. Check it out, guys. God, that... <sighs> Which one? <laughs> I don't know, guys. <laughs> they were all bad. They I've never sucked. seen them. Oh, I thought uh, there was just one. Uh, it hit- doesn't matter. <laughs> Let me get through this. Uh, but welcome to the bone zone is said by the skull daddies because the whelp ripped off two men's flesh. Jesus Cramini! The whelps like the skin is the best part with the cantalla beans. Ha la la la, ha la la. He said, "I can smell your cunt." Put the fucking lotion in the basket. <laughs> but they start the four-way tango, and the bone warriors start to mango. That's right. They throw a still life painting's worth of fruit at Lobo to, <laughs> I guess, distract him. Why not throw the actual bowl? Didn't they? No. He just threw the fruit. I don't think any of the fruit even hit him. Nothing hit him. I think two of them did. In the whole show. Man, he's a good fruit dodger. Guys, I w- okay, so normally my episode summaries kind of veer off and like just get very obscure. This is my most accurate one ever. All of this stuff is actually happening. Yes. Lobine then chases the skulls as they escape, but Turbine gets lost in a thick cloud of smoke, much like my siblings will to do well in high school. Blaze it. Turbine then has a sit-down play date with fellow luchador Hog, and oh my god, his skin is gone. He takes a shower and skin eating acid rain. He watched his friend's flesh dissolve while still alive. But he got two shirts. Yeah, I was yeah. About to say that. he went in with no shirt and came out with two shirts. <laughs> Anywho, the whelp <laughs> then breaks the fourth wall, alluding to sexy shower scenes boosting mid-season ratings, a.k.a. we finally get a really solid joke. Wait, wait, hold up. Before we continue past the shower bit, uh, we need to discuss the pre-bone, half-bone, and full-bone. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. What oh, the we hell will. was that oh, about? We will. It's, it's what you think, if pre-bone. Oh, we're talking about this now. Uh, yeah, we can talk about it now. <laughs> it doesn't make sense because you still have bones. Yeah. The bones. And then if you're half bone, 
I guess they're they're saying like half of your skin is bones, maybe. Maybe. Like your skin is pre-bone and it then... It doesn't melt your skin off. It just like turns your skin into bone. Yeah, it calcifies the stone. Ugh. For context on what we're talking about, in the shower scene, there is a green liquid that goes to the top of like a pipe and goes into a shower head that acidifies everybody into bones. But the signs that are on the side of the pipe say... Uh, what is it? Pre bone, halfway through, half bone, and then at the top, full bone. What the hell was that? Any like I wanted any of that it to about? say post bone, but guys, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite signs are the ones in cornfields that make me say, "Uh oh, the alien coming." Also, fuck turbine. He could have, you know. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. This is something. Before I get into more of the episode summary, he sees this guy, and the, the hog is pleading, like, "Please help me. I don't know what's going on, but I have a strange feeling." And he's like, "Uh." a little tied up here if you don't see and then he gets turned into bone and then turbine's like time to get out of here and breaks his chains then we do get a good enough the whelp had very good jokes in this he said maybe i should stop buying my chains at the flea market which is i uh. think good because like it, it's saying he's buying cheap chains and they keep getting broken and it's flea like he's a dog Oh, I guess he's like, oh, a sh- sexy shot. He doesn't say sexy. He says, oh, a shower scene. What is this? Uh, sweeps month. Meaning <laughs> like, hey, we're trying to get more ratings. So we'll be able to get better sponsors. I think that's what sweeps is. It sounds I right. I have no Probably. idea. Sounds like but a turbine thing. is a fucking asshole, man. You could have fucking saved him. Fuck yeah. turbine. Can I get a sign? I don't know, just to put anywhere that says the bone zone. Yeah, I'm down. Sweet. Shane, do it. Make it up. I mean, I what? can. I'm <laughs> okay because they confront the two the cheaters in the alleyway. Two of the the bone. What are they called? Bone warriors. The bone warriors, and they say, "Welcome to the bone zone." And they start fucking. Yes. Turbine could have just cubed it and got his friends out. You should have just fucking cubed it, man. You're that's, absolutely right. That's a don't explain anymore in case someone wants to... It's a hidden credit reference. Yeah, Go check it out. We're not going to spoil anything. Oh, but we do spoil our fans with such great content. Mm-hmm. We have the cube. Yes. Yes, we still have sure. the cube. You to talk into the mic, man. No, I'm just... That, Rudy <laughs> asked, do we still have the cube? The, the sidebar. <laughs> no. Sidebar. Of course we do. Well, I don't know. I thought... Anyways. It doesn't matter. Listen to our show. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, his skin is gone. Anywho, he breaks the wall and Lobo then gets trapped by our worst nightmare. Two turbines, Lord, take me now for this world is hell. We then find out the water supply has been contaminated with pickle fetus brine and all is lost. But wait, the gang gets free by scissor kicking a door down, which is just normal kicking, not kicking with long blades glued to your legs to cut off heads. Back at the water plant, Lobine beats up the well mech yet again, but this time with marbles. In the end, we don't learn, but wish they would have forced marbles down that dog's throat, filling up his biological stomach, and Aww. in turn, quickly killing this evil menace who happens to be a small adult adorable dog and protecting Union City for years to come. Car Ranger. Oh, no. I do feel bad. I don't like chihuahuas, but I do feel bad for that chihuahua in the show. They film in Canada and the outside. Normally it's shivering in indoor scenes. That outdoor scene. God damn, it was about to die. He had a fedora and a trench coat on. Still cold. But Toasty. still like on top of that, like the stuff on its snout and eyes like people like that. <laughs> Dogs is cool with that. The, the side, the was side there anything on effects? its snout? I, thought, yeah. I know it had that weird mask thing. Yeah. That might, yeah, you're right. That probably was uncomfortable. Bless you. Thank you. I got to get into modeling and stuff and cosplaying so I we can cosplay Frank as the whelp. No. That'd be so fucking cool. Can you help me whelpify Frank? Define whelpify. Uh, the- give him that mask thing. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I can. I would love to help whelpify Frank. In- oh, also turn him into a chihuahua. In case any of you we'll about- were wondering, Rudy is a very good uh, designer when it comes to um, fashion and to cosplay. I'm a moderately okay, but thank you. Can you make Frank a giant mech suit? I <laughs> could honestly probably make him something that he could squeeze into out of cardboard. <laughs> he Not cardboard. He claw it up. He loves cardboard. Aw. Well, every time he claws it, the limbs move. 
Or it's just battle scars. Okay, on the inside, though. Sure. Those are my kind of scars. Because <laughs> oh, no. you have ulcers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, also emotional. Uh, I have a quick, a quick thing to talk about. When they were on their way to the water purification plant, uh-huh. I forget who the, their guy on, behind the computer is. I don't know what his name is. Laurent. Laurent. There you go. He tells him to hurry up, and then fucking Turbine's like, did someone say hurry? That's my favorite word. He must be a two-pump chump. <laughs> He's like... Oh, no, the uh, ladies he with are two-pump chumps. That's how good his dick is. That, why am I defending him he this episode? Two pump jump, man. That's I'm why he you. likes the word hurry. They're just like, oh, uh, Turbine, I've just finished. Hurry up. Yeah. There you go. I'm like, oh, I've, I'm having too many pelvic spasms. <laughs> pelvic ulcers. Hurry up. You. I don't think you know what an ulcer is. You do not. Oh, an ulcer in your vagina? That would be the worst. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jose just le- pushed his head back like he's in the shower rinsing off Garnier Fructis, but said, oh, my God. Garnier Fructis. <laughs> How do you know what I use in the shower? I smell you, baby. Ooh. Not like he's Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. <laughs> no, Jack Nicholson, he wasn't. Jack Nicholson doesn't do it like nicely, you know? I'm Jack Nicholson. I'm Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I'm Jack Nicholson. And I'm Shelly Duvall. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> it's the shining up in here. Uh, so I want to start doing when we segue into other things. This should have been a first note. I want to start like we'll make a a tiger noise and go vamanos. No. Uh, yeah, they did that like three times. I was like, why uh, is this a thing now? They, no, they've always done that. No. Yes. Also, I have what? seen it in other episodes, but it felt like they did way too much in this episode. Yeah. They also say one other phrase. Uh, it's like. Oh, Luchadors Loco, something like that. Also, Maria and Turbine both call Lobo Hefe. And, like, it's just at this point, like, you don't. You mean Jeff? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. I honestly didn't even notice it at this point because it's just all the time in this show. It's just annoying. It is super annoying and stupid. It's like, and I hate to say this, but like, a lot of places I've worked at. A lot of the white people will call the Mexicans jefes because it mean like it means boss, but it's just mm-hmm. like you know like when Giram used to call Suzette boss. Hey boss, what do you want me to do? It's just every time I hear a white person say jefe, I'm just like, why? You don't need to do like don't try too hard. Just be fuck be you. Because they're just relax. like ah, we're the same. And it's eh, like no, we're no, we're you're definitely not. not. <laughs> I speak one. Uh, I hablo no Spanglaise. I'm sorry. I don't speak Mexican. Mexican. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? I <laughs> speak American, okay? <sighs> and that's fucking red, white, and blue, baby. That's with the language I speak. Muchos gracias, Jefe. I call my bosses <laughs> so heifers. I actually do call my <laughs> boss a heifer because I am my own boss. I call my boss a body image coach. Yeah, you do. Is yeah. that heifer another word I, for a cow? Yeah. Okay. I, I call my boss Zach. <laughs> Because his name's Zach. I call my boss Daddy. I call my boss Solid Snake. (laughs) There's a boss on there, isn't there? Uh, Someone named Boss. He's Big Boss. Yeah. Well, no way. Big Boss is from some solid. You know what? This is going to go on a whole Metal Gear tangent. We do not need that. I want to Big Daddy. No. You have to tell me now because now I'm intrigued. I'll tell you later. Okay, everyone, (laughs) stop. Stop. (laughs) There are too many conversations going on. (laughs) All I heard was Bioshock Daddy. I so there are <laughs> there are so many ceremonies in this town. It feels like every single episode is built around like, hey, we're throwing a ceremony for this specific thing. Lobo Day, the new water plant, the dam that's coming up. It, I guess it's just a I progressive mean, city. Are, the Polynesian Warriors those celebration. Are like things to celebrate though. I guess. It, a water treatment plant is something to celebrate. If yeah, you're in Flint, if, Michigan. Oh yeah, I mean Hey, there they you still go. don't have clean water. Except there's poison in the watering <sighs> hole. That's where Los Luchadores takes place, Flint, Michigan. That's why they had this all Just set up. Just this one episode. This one episode, yes. But was it like before or like is that how the wet water got bad? Ooh, you're it's right. Because now when you drink it, it you turn into bones. Yeah. Yeah, because you die and then yes. you decay into bones. Yes. 
And then you start chitter chattering around telling the mayor of Michigan, which I don't know anymore because no longer live there. You start knocking on his doors and you go, clicky, clacky, clicky, clicky. I'm a little skeleton. If anybody from Flint, Michigan is listening to this, I'm sorry if this is a, a touchy subject. We're enraged. enraged. For you. Yeah. Because we know you are too. It's super sucky. Anyway, moving on. Thanks for listening to our TED Talk. (laughs) Anyone that lives in Michigan, I'm sorry. Yeah, guys. (laughs) Fuck that place, baby. The mayor's mic technique at the end and his assistants, I would have comically criticized them on a podcast until she started moving it up and down for him. I would have just shut the podcast recording down and said, you guys can leave. I'll do this on my own. But what did you say about the mixing? The mixing, though, as it was like going up and down from his mouth, you could hear a proximity effect to the like echo in there, which, hey, whoever did the mixing for this, two thumbs up. But yeah, I still don't like that marbles are what took down the mech. It really should not have taken out that mech. The I would have loved li- to see a part two. The littlest things take down this mech. And Turbine comments on it of like, geez, here we go again. The mech is back. And I'm glad he did because the, I thought that. And then he said it. I was like, thank God. This mech blows. Oh, also, when uh, when Turbine and uh, Lobo are stuck in the shower and uh, <laughs> Lobo tells Turbine, we need to get out of here. And Turbine just goes, "Why well, duh. okay wait Uh, i feel like we completely glossed over something uh turbine takes out stealth dressed lobo which by the way is sickest outfit i've ever seen and then they're both up in the shower and then all of a sudden turbine's skeleton clone it's not a it's a hologram like they hologrammed his face like a minor illusion okay it just (laughs) comes out of nowhere okay i straight up thought it was a clone he didn't hit him with that pipe it didn't even touch near him you're right skeleton clones anyway i mean like if you're going to take out Lobo, especially stealth Lobo, you should fucking at least at least make it look like you fucking hit him. Yeah. Not like, eh. Any, On the shoulder. Yeah, not like <laughs> I it know. didn't even look like it touched. It looked like it got near the shoulder, but mm. that was it. There was a little bounce back from the rubber pipe that he hit him with. It, <laughs> a little bit of bounce back. As an actor, you don't even... Don't, you know what? I just... I hate this show. <laughs> I fucking hate it. What about... When they're trying to teach kids about safety and they just like do have a close up of his crotch when he puts his seatbelt on. Yeah. I mean, hey, (laughs) it's great to teach kids about safety, but it's the exact same clip. Did you see that bulge? Why does it have to be so? I thought that was pants. It's just pants. (laughs) I think the only issue I have with it being the exact same clip is that it's the exact same clip no matter the location. Like it's gonna like it's him buckling his seatbelt in the warehouse. It's like at night. At <laughs> the the clip is shot during the day. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, because they have lights and in the warehouse. Yeah, but it but if you're like if you're out on patrol at night, you're not gonna be clipping your seatbelt in your warehouse. He turned the lights on in the car <laughs> with the warehouse in the background. Ah! You want to be able to tell because it was just his crotch and that's it. Yeah, you don't see anything else. And like I told I you. Guess. You were like, oh, he's just buckling up the same time. It is for safety. You well, should yeah, be buckling up the same exact time, the same exact way every time you get in that car. I had a friend who their grandparents, they went to a car yard. Okay. And they found their what car they had and just took the seatbelt buckle so they could just plug that in so they didn't have to wear a seatbelt and it wouldn't like ding, oh. ding, ding. And it's like, okay, boomer. That, okay, no, that's not boomer. good at all. They, they're like, well, if I do it, it has one of those sensors in it. So if it keeps beeping, I don't want it to keep beeping. Now they're like YOLO and you're like sick. <laughs> <laughs> Radical. Now, if only those people had lost luchadores to show them to always put a seatbelt on. Yeah, or only if the... Oh, wait. And I was about to tell someone's... Hey, what, what, those grandparents should just die in a car <laughs> oh, crash. Uh, oh, but it could have happened. Oh, like, oh, That's how oh, my grandpa ben. died. Oh, Your yeah, grandfather fucking. died in a car crash? Yeah, I never met him. Okay. I, I don't know. I just figured I'd ruin the mood. Oh, I'm not going to go there. So how's your relationship <laughs> with your father, James? 
Uh, <laughs> still up in the air. Still hasn't said happy birthday, and it's now been maybe three months. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy Even though I said birthday. it on your birthday, but happy birthday you again. You did. Just text him and be like, happy birthday. When it's his birthday, I'll message like, hey, this is how you wish someone a happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, any more notes, guys, before we get into our last bit asking Jose this? I, ask, I, didn't, I didn't write down a lot of notes because I was just very upset with this show i didn't want I'm halfway through not even i'm lying not even halfway through like you just five wanted minutes, to soak it all in because five it's so minutes great. into the fucking show i was just like why why is this so good and why have i never seen it before why isn't it available on us dvd only an import from italy maybe the dude is from, from italy. italy holy <laughs> shit <laughs> That could be it. Oh, man. So it gets even more racist by the minute. Oh, yeah, guys. Back at uh, pre-9-11, you better believe Italian was ethnic enough on television. Yeah, Italy is like, I don't know. It's like kind of Spain. I'm No, <laughs> I'm commenting on poor things from the past. And then you're saying right now, like, yeah, this is what I believe. No, I'm just saying, like, in general, like... When I was in Spain, it was basically like the... Humble <laughs> brag. It's basically just Hispanic Italy. You know why, right? Because it's Italian. Oh, my God. Point being, kids. Uh, it's not wrong to assume that Lobo, the uh, Italian actor, is actually Hispanic. I don't know where I was going with this. I am physically hurting right now. I just have one more note. Potts and the assistant must have the most awkward sex ever. They're fumbling around. That's I was, the best yeah. place. Because they're on cocaine. Oh, that's, no, that is not cocaine. That's maybe Adderall? Yeah. But um, then they'd have more confidence if they were on Adderall. You never know. I don't know. Never did this stuff. Neither have I. I did Adderall once, and that was not fun at all. Don't do drugs, kids. I just say, if it's high energy, it's gotta be cocaine, baby. I heard <laughs> rap is like cocaine. 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 I didn't sleep for 36 hours, and I had work, and that was rough. When the fuck oh, was no. this? Oh, uh, my ex force fed it to me. You're a uh, fuck that. Ugh. Yeah. She's rocking, guys. The most recent really. one? Or? Yes. The one that we've all agreed is like trash. Hey, if you're listening to this, fuck off. Thank hey, you. but if you're listening to it and you want to leave a five star review <laughs> and let me know which one is Garfield, which one is Odie, and which one is John, please feel free to. And you want to know what? Keep listening to all of them. The backlogs. Rudy's on some old ones. Jose's there. Oh, you better believe we have Ranger Command Power Hour. You, you know their Patreon.com forward slash Ranger Command PH. Hey, do I beat Melzer with this episode? I believe you do. <laughs> yeah, fucking take that, Melzer. Uh! Melzer and him have a beef going on of who has <laughs> been on the most, mostly speaking, Sentai's. And I think you beat Courtney as well. Mm. I'm like, yes, I beat a lady. No. Into submission. <laughs> you did it. Are you Huzzah. happy now, Mom? <laughs> We should have like a like employee of the month, but for most episodes, just like on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> most the the superest of superstars, mostly speaking Sentai. <laughs> you can't see it, but I'm fucking flexing on you all you hoes. You have some muscles, man. I know, right? Flexing on all you hoes. Ah, get it? Okay. Every single, mostly every single Lost Luchadoras episode, we ask something similar to our Gorma ones. If you were a wrestler, what would your name be? And then, like, what would your maybe finisher be? What, what's your gimmick? Uh, you're just asking me or both of us? Uh, he's already answered it. Don't okay. remember what you said, though. Okay. Something about pan fried noodles. Okay, I got this. That's up your alley, yeah. it seems. I would be El Ciego. That's the blind man, because I'm fucking blind. I'd just be, you know, like very comically stumbling around and, you know, dodging moves because I'm looking for my glasses. And then uh, the finishing move would be like, as soon as they trip and fall on their back, I'm going to trip on their body, but into a people's elbow onto their face, you know, and then pin them because I can't get up because I don't know where my glasses are. So you're <laughs> the wrestling equivalent to Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Who's and Mr. Magoo? Even, oh, God. Mr. Magoo was also in a wrestling episode. Like he had a wrestling episode. I I I don't know if that's I don't know if I've seen that one, but it makes sense. Yeah. He's so good. He just goes on these he's bald and uh he can't see very well and he miraculously dodges things. Sorry, did you say he's a bald man? Yeah. I told you there were more than one bald people in like <laughs> that hitman. <laughs> 
fucking hit you. I'm talking about the video game, you asshole. Because Mr. Magoo is in Hitman. <laughs> oh, that's that DLC. You gotta get it. We gotta we gotta make a mod for it where the Hitman is just Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Guys, I had a dream that I was playing Diablo 2 and <laughs> last night, and I loved it. It was so fun. I want to play Diablo. We we should play it sometime. I would love to actually like, uh, do a LAN or something. I'm sorry. Do a mostly plan for that. Yeah. Or a hit it and crit it. Yeah. Oh, we never fucking get back here. And my with my trash. with my new computer, yeah. we'll be able to do HDMI out. Fuck yeah. And just record it that. Oh, we sweet. Use it moi. Record it that way. I think you mean a scooch me. Oh yeah. Sorry. But speaking <laughs> of hit it and credits and stuff, any more notes? I, I just fucked this show, man. Seconded. Uh, the last note I had was Chihuahua Mech, and we already covered that. So. I Chihuahua. But speaking of hit it and crit it, what is that? Uh, Rudy, you want to take this one? Or should we just bounce ideas? You want to... Every uh, other sentence. I'll I'll start in you. Okay. okay. So hit it and crit it is a D&D podcast where me... Host Burrito, our uh, good boy Joe, and our best boy uh, Corey, our DM, and uh, most of all, we got our producer James on the show as well. We do an evil D and D campaign, and we we do good boy, bad boy stuff. It's a non canonical campaign where the the main characters are the bad guys, basically, or are they? I don't know. Maybe check it out. Also, why the fuck are you gonna call me Hose Burrito on the podcast after I'm, I fucking just I'm said sorry, all this was, shit? I'm sorry. About, that was ugh. like a really weird reflex and it just happened. Also, for for the spirit of Los Luchadores, Hose Burrito. There we go. No, it's El Ciego. It's Hose Chicago. There you go. Wait, El, El, what's your Spanish? El Ciego. El Ciego. Got it. <sighs> Come on. Vaminous. Anyway, the, what else is there? <laughs> yeah, so it's a non canonical non canonical D D campaign where everything is pretty much created by Corey. If you want to just hear from when James starts, it's episode nineteen and on. Or if you want to start from the beginning, start from the beginning. Uh, our Instagram is hit it underscore and underscore credit. And our Twitter is uh hit it and credit. No, no ampersand. There you go. Okay, it's I've never done this but before. You're the one. Our YouTube does. is uh, hit it ampersand credit. There you go, buddy. It's all different. Yeah. Was that it? That was it for hit it and credit. I mean, I have you have your own shit to plug, right? Do I? Yeah. I mean, I've kind of like he an says ins- do I like it does <laughs> anyway. That means I mean, he like, doesn't want it. I mean, like Sorry. I've got an Instagram or something. Don't you have two? I do have two. The second one isn't really up, but I'll plug it anyway. Yeah. Um, my first Instagram is R U D A G E R Rudiger, like Rudy Rudiger, the Notre Dame football boy, ninety six. Uh, that's where I just post normal cosplay stuff and just other stuff in general. And my other Instagram, which hasn't really uh, gone up yet, but it's going to be Style by Rudy. It's a total fashion blog kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, last but not least, it's uh, cuffing season and you're all alone. You're lonely. You want to cuddle. Hit me up on Instagram. That's <laughs> Lito El Cubano. That's L-I-T-O underscore E-L underscore C-U-B-A-N-O. So yeah, you want to cuddle? Hit me up. What's up, baby? <laughs> Get a cat. I'm Get allergic. three. He's gonna get so some. Am I. <laughs> Wait, you're the allergic fuck? to cats? Yeah. You're allergic to this boy? Yes. Maybe that's what. Maybe he doesn't cuddle you that much because he knows. Out and of, he's being considerate. Out of re- respect? Yeah. But Nicole, what I you got to plug? So. I got my website, darlinghomebody.com. Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook is Darling Homebody. I also have Patreon, patreon.com slash Darling Homebody. Uh, I think the newest design should be announced by the time this comes out. And what's that Patreon do? Uh, you get a sticker or magnet every month and help me to not hate life a little bit. Oh. Yeah, daddies. Anything else? Uh, 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 they're also, the stickers are exclusive to Patreon. So like, if you don't sign up for it, you probably won't be able to get that sticker ever again unless I decide to bring it to like a con or something. Guys, I would like to give a big shout out to Courtney, a hit it and credit fan. We don't know if she's crossed over, but she recently donated to Marshland Media, which you can do as well at mlmpod.com forward slash donate. We just bought an inexpensive computer. I mean, uh, freaking Corey and Shane would say it's still a like okay computer you could spend more um, and the- actually there's better computers than that one <laughs> well like the graphics processor is pretty good but like a six core a hexa core at that much like 
I think it'd be okay. It's insanely good, guys. My current computer is a dual core. Yes, a dual core. Every CD I've put out, every beat I've made, every podcast that's been released, I have been doing on a 10-year-old dual core, no GPO, it, it, GPU, I should say, uh, GPG. And it, it clocks in at like each one is like 2.7 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM. It's not a good computer. Does the job. Yeah, it does a job, but slowly. But can it handle floppy disks? <laughs> I think. If yeah. I had a USB of it, yeah. Could. Okay, then. Uh, you can get a USB floppy drive. I just oh. want to say that, like, it's, I don't, it's not expensive. Like, to you, it's expensive because that's a lot of money, but, like, I, that's, like, the average cost of a desktop. Yeah, it's a, it was $650. That's not bad. Yeah. And it's very good. Six cores. Uh, yeah, for a hexacore, yeah. But guys, check out my other podcasts such as Hit It and Crit It. Woo! Ah. This movie's gay. And what the hell mouth? It's back bi-weekly. That's every other week, not twice a week. And then also check out Mostly Playing PlayStation on YouTube. It's under the Mostly Speaking Sentai stuff. Rudy's been on it. Jose was on it, but wasn't really. Yeah. Nicole's been on a bunch of episodes. It's just me playing video games with my friends and sometimes by myself you can find out more information about my all this stuff that i do at mlmpod.com and please donate if you'd like and leave us a review for real tell us what's frank is he john am i Odie? is nicole garfield oh, let us know five star review uh and thank you guys for being here thank you for having us it's, it was a pleasure it's yeah, always baby. good to be on this podcast oh. And you guys better believe there might be a Christmas special with our friends oh, coming oh, soon. Oh, oh, oh. oh also, uh, if you are listening to this before December 13th, on December 13th, we will be having a call-in show where you call in and you let us know what your Sentai team's power would come from. You know there's car magic, but what about dead bug magic? What about dad ass magic? Let us know. You can call in from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. It is 224-900-7644. Please call us. We'll be there for two hours. If we get a bunch of calls, we might go longer. Me? No, no. That's from the recess, but I've been James. I'm Nicole. I'm Rudable Scoop. I'm Jose. And we've been Mostly, Mostly Loving Lucha. Lucha. Bye-bye, guys. Sorry. Los Luchadores, the faceless heroes, Lucha Libre and Mascarados, Lobo Fuerte. Skin. It's full of blood, covered in hair, and gets all bumpy when a cute lady kisses it. But is skin something we need? Absolutely not. Without flesh, gone would be the days of cowering to the steel edge of a blade for the fear of being poked so hard you die. Say goodbye to... <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> I'm Nicole. And this is mostly, mostly loving. And this is. <laughs> and this, this is, is mostly no, okay. loving smooches. <laughs> Only three and a half minutes to get that. Uh, you know? Okay. Uh. <laughs> I'm going to do like a wrestling intro and I'm going to like introduce oh you. Oh my God. Uh, uh, what, what did I want to say? It was like, I, I have a specific thing. I should just improv it, you know, fuck the page, man. Fuck the page, man. Fuck the page. Ooh, yeah. It's Macho James. I make you Randy, baby, Mullum. Who do I have here, baby? Who do I have in this ring? Uh, uh, hi. It's the nature girl, Nick Flair. And then you go, whoo! Woo! <laughs> Nicole just learned what Nick Flair was, I think, yesterday. Rick Flair? Rick Flair? Yeah, Rick what, Flair, the nature boy. Yeah. What's Nick Flair? It's Rick Flair. What's Rick it, Flair? You said Nick oh Flair. Oh my god. Yeah, Nick <laughs> Flair, like Nicole. Okay, but like you just said that I learned that I just learned of Nick Flair. No, I said Rick Flair. No, you said Nick no, Flair. Oh my god. Do we need to restart <laughs> yeah. this no. over? No, okay. no, no. This is a blooper, guys. <laughs> I actually do want to restart. This is a blooper, okay. Ah, uh, a Patreon. Ooh, yeah. yeah, that's more of a macho man. Oh, this has been a Marshland Media production, produced by James McCullum. 
For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today.